Hey guys, Caleb here with Catch the Fever, and what you're about to watch is an amazing story about an angler who hooked and landed the new North Carolina state record catfish on July 4th weekend. As some of you might know, at Catch the Fever, we have a promotional payout where if you catch a state record using our rod, you have an opportunity to earn up to $10,000 if the proper steps are met on our terms and conditions. Uh, you also have opportunity to earn an extra 5,000 if using our apparel. The angler, Joey Baird, who caught the state record, was faced with an enormous amount of adversity. He went from celebrating to trying times and finding a biologist who would be there to be able to certify this state record on July 4th weekend at two in the morning. And this guy was doing his best to, uh, to overcome the odds that were stacked against him uh, on this weekend. And Joey was located only about an hour and a half away. I wanted to drive out there and get to see this fish firsthand. One of the things that we're passionate about at Catch the Fever is catch and release. It's stated in our terms and conditions that, uh, that if in the event you do catch a state record, the fish has to be released alive. I wanted to go out there and be a part of that process and seeing that fish be released. Immediately on, on arrival and uh, seeing Joey and his team uh, standing out there, they had a massive tub uh, that they were able to get their hands on and they had an oxygen tank. Uh, the fish looked like it was doing great. Being those challenges that Joey had to go through and seeing that fish at that moment, I was relieved. I was really glad to see the fish was recovering and doing really well. Joey took a minute and turned around and addressed myself and about the other 15 people that were there that were part of this release process. Joey explained to us what you're gonna find in this video was an amazing story and that he was gonna be donating the $10,000 payout to his local fire department for them to buy a rescue boat. I'm excited, as I said, guys, for you to see this story unfold and what this guy did, not only to try to keep this fish alive, but to educate new anglers coming on and to also give back to his community. You hear a song or a certain smell after so many years and it takes you right back to that uh, particular place in time, you know. Uh, but the lake is, lake is like that for me. Every time I'm here, memories always flood back from growing up as a kid on this lake. Right growing up, my dad had guide service on Kerr Lake and Gaston Lake for stripers. So it seemed like every weekend I spent fishing with my father. Um, while he'd be trolling or either uh, dropping shad down, I always had that one rod in front of me that as a kid, you always want your rod. I would always have that one rod and I would always take the dead shad that my dad had that would die in the shad barrel and put them on the bottom and mainly catfish while he was doing his thing, striper fishing. So, you know, it kind of goes back to those days as a kid, fishing with him and, uh, and my brother as well on, on the boat. So, um, as a police officer, you deal with so many things, uh, so many events that kind of stamp your life, it's things you'll never be able to get out of your head, you've seen, and you kind of put them back in the back of your mind. They're always there and you keep going with everyday life, but we meet people on their worst days. Uh, so it, it kind of kind of takes a toll on you there as a police officer, and that's why I guess I take up hunting and fishing so much as one of my hobbies. For me, October 13th, 2018, 
was a day that kind of um, definitely had a stamp on my life. It um, it was a, uh, I guess it was a couple days after the, I believe it was Hurricane Michael, that came through, and we had uh, we had some record flood wars that came through our county in the rivers, and uh, that particular morning I was working um, as a police officer, and uh, I remember getting the call and hearing um, of a subject that was trapped in a vehicle uh, that had been swept away that tried to drive through some standing water. While I was en route to that call, I stopped by my house and jumped on the boat and grabbed three life jackets. Um, and to this day, I, I think that uh, that's probably the only reason I'm here talking to you now is because uh, I probably would have jumped in down there without the life jacket on. And I arrived on scene and it's, um, it's uh, several other officers on scene as well. I could see the car was pinned up against the trees, almost like a bobber. Um, the motor was basically pointed down towards the ground and the current, the water was so strong that morning that it had pinned this car up against the trees and basically filled the whole, basically filled the whole inside of the uh, vehicle up to about six inches of the back window. She got on the phone with dispatch and, and told them her location and that she was in the vehicle and the water was filling up and she didn't have much time left and she could not get out the vehicle. Um, as I'm going through the water, um, I can I can hear, hear hidden on the side of the uh, glass and I could see her face pressed up against the back window with the current being as strong as it was, I knew I wasn't coming back until we got a boat to us. My main focus that morning was trying to get to the vehicle, get the back window busted and get her out on top of the car so she would have a chance. The conservation officers, once they got to us, their boat was only able to handle one or two people at a time. So it was a, it was a process getting everybody off that boat. But um, at the end of that day, um, everybody was able to come out of that river. I'm, I'm thankful for all the guys that I worked with that day. I'm thankful for everybody, uh, all the dispatchers. Um, you know, not, no one person in any situation like that. Um, it's just, it's just, it's a team. So uh, Sunday, Sunday evening, I sent Mark a text and asked him, did they want to go catfishing Sunday night? And he told me that'd be great. And I told him, well, since your son's not down, I said, you know, does Courtney want to go? Your wife want to go out with us? And he's like, yeah, she'd love to go. So I said, all right, well, I will, uh, I'll pick y'all up off your dock. I'll, uh, you know, he's like, you got to bring, do I need to bring anything? And, um, I don't have any of the catfish rods or anything. I said, you ain't got to bring a thing. I said, I'll bring the boat, the rods, and the bait. All you need to do is come on the boat and let's go. So we leave the dock. Our first stop of the night, um, I, I anchor up. I put, a, I put an anchor out. A lot of times I'll anchor up at night when I'm night fishing put an anchor on the front and then I'll put one on the back sometimes to keep the boat from swinging around. I put all my rods out and I, I don't know exactly how long we had been in that particular spot. Uh, I told him, I said, you know, if we don't get anything in the next 15 minutes, we're going to move to another hole. And uh, not long right after I said that, the first fish of the night hit. When he hit that rod, he spun that rod tip around and it it folded that rod all the way down the side of the boat. That that rod was on one of the rod holders on the side mount of my boat. 
and not the rod rack. And that fish had hit that line and basically run down the side of the boat and I had not noticed that rod because he had came towards the boat when he hit it instead of going away. Over the years of catching catfish, you kind of, that drag is kind of like a telltale when you hear it ripping. You can kind of, you know when it starts ripping a lot of times that you got a, you got a decent fish on. And uh, I knew as soon as it, it hit that rod, I told Mark, I said, it's a big fish. Hold on, I'm gonna get this. All right, guys. Yes. First time catfishing in like six months, going back to my roots. We got a potential, I don't know how big he is, but he's coming, he's coming to, he's fighting. Been fighting him for like. I get the rod, I fight the fish from the backside, trying to go around two or three rods, put them back in place. The fish dives back around to the right, uh, rip and drag the whole time. As the fish runs back down the, the back corner of the boat where the anchor line is, he run right in between the anchor line and one of the rods that I had. Handed the rod back to Mark and told him, I said, he's going for the anchor. I gotta get it up. I get the back anchor up. And at that point, I knew we would clear the back anchor, so I kinda had a little relief. I'm gonna cut some light to him, watch your So I yelled at Mark and Courtney, I'm going live, and I right, told Courtney, come down and grab the phone. In which I shouldn't have grabbed the phone. I should have just went on and start grabbing rods and getting them out of the way and anchor lines. But anyway, Courtney is on the camera or the phone. I'm trying to get lines up off the front of the boat, try to keep them from getting uh, tangled up. As I'm getting the front rod up, I could tell that fish was just going for that front anchor. At that point, I yelled at Mark, told him, I said, uh, going for the front anchor at this point, and I got to get it up, so uh, I start picking up the front anchor, and as I'm picking it up, I hear Mark basically tell me, you know, uh, he's on the anchor. He's in your anchor? Yeah, he's All right, give definitely. It. All right, hold on. I can feel him on the anchor. I knew he was going for the anchor line. So look, this is what we're gonna do. I knew we were in trouble at that point, and uh, I didn't exactly know what to do in that split second, but, um, cause I never had a big fish on an anchor line like that. So I told Mark, I said, listen, we gotta, we gotta free spool it. You gotta have to put your thumb on this spool and give me line, but enough to keep tension on it to keep it from basically backlashing if that fish hits it again, but you gotta give me some line while I get this anchor line up to keep from, you know, breaking this line. Um, I actually, once I get the anchor almost up in the boat, I can see the fish on the anchor. When I roll the anchor up, the fish rolls up beside it. I actually grab that line and clear that line off that anchor and that fish dove back down. When that fish, we got him up on the surface, I made one swipe with the net and put him in the net. And uh, I knew from seeing him in that anchor line that he was big. I knew he was over 100 just by looking at him right there in that anchor. Um, but when I put the net around him, I knew right then I had a potential state record fish uh, in the net. And uh, I told Mark, I said, Mark, you're going to have to help me get the fish. Oh, my yeah! God. We got a fuck 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 Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my um, I think one of the exact first things I said when I put that fish in the boat is, is uh, we have to call a biologist. We need, we need, we need biologists out here. Oh, God. Oh. Hey, I need some help getting him in the boat. Dude, bro. I got him. I got you. I don't even know who Dude, to call right weigh? now. How much does that weigh? That is that fish. That fish. I'm gonna guess right now is that fish is over a hundred pounds, bro. 
That fish is over 100 pounds, y'all. I want to talk to um, I started calling just about anybody I could think of that would help me out in that situation. Um, I had a prior tank from uh, catfish tournaments that I'd fished that I had at the house that I had um, had a bilge pump and stuff in. And I called, uh, I called a buddy of mine to see if he would run get that tank at that point. Um, so we had something to put the fish in. Oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> what the hell? Come on, big man. <laughs> I don't have a scale that goes that high there. My scale, I, I went to I'm telling you, a marina that I was pretty confident they had certified scales. And I tried to get in touch with the owner of that marina, but um, I was unsuccessful at that point. I had made several calls. My wife had actually made calls to my brother, woke him up. My brother gets on the phone and starts making calls at the same time I am. Um, at this point, we have several people trying to get in touch with the biologist, trying to get in touch with a conservation officer. Um, I wasn't prepared for this, uh, but I was using the resources that I had available and trying to, um, trying to do the best I had with what I had to work with. I told Sean, I told Mark Courtney, I said, at this point we need to get the fish back in the water. Uh, Sean had brought the tank to me. We had realized once the tank had gotten there that that fish was just so big, it was going to be more of a stress on that fish to try to get him in that tank. Uh, that, just, that tank wasn't big enough. Uh, after we got the fish back in the water, uh, at that point I started making more phone calls, knowing that, you know, it's in the middle of the night. It's 4th of July weekend. It's going to be hard to get somebody to come out. It's in the night. But listen, um, we went live at two anchor lines. He got tangled up in both of them. It was, I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. But look, this fish is going over 100 pounds. I'm just going to get down beside him. The girth, the yep. The girth on this fish is absolutely unreal, man. It's a it's a tough situation. Try to wake somebody up at two or three o'clock in the morning and get them out, which I was trying to do. This big, this fish is is almost long as I am. That fish is a hundred pounds. Yeah. So I don't exactly know what time it was the next morning that I end up getting the biologist on the phone. Um, I want to say it was around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, he told me that get the fish to certified scales and get it on the scales and you show me 117 or better and I'll, uh, I'll head your way. I had told the biologist I had an uncertified weight that I knew of that we were going to be somewhere in the range between 120 and 125. And uh, if he could start heading my way, you know, and meet me at the scales, try to save a little bit of time. Um, when he walked up, I remember the biologist saying that um, the fish looked very good. You know, he hopped on how good that fish looked and, and uh, we transported the fish to another location, which was not far from where we were at, to put in a little bit of deeper water to try to hopefully give it the best chance it could to survive. Um, we took it out the tank. Fish had good color. Fish looked good to me. Um, we were able to get the fish back in the water. I was very excited at the fact that that fish swam off. Um, just as a fisherman and a fish of that, that size, man, you know, you do everything you can to try to make sure that fish is certified, but at the same time that um, you can get that fish back in the water living.
So, um, when I received a call about the fish being dead, uh, it took the wind right out of my sails instantly, knowing that all that effort and everything we put into that, um, it kind of went down the drain at that point. I hope someone can learn from my from my experience um, in the situation that we've got now. <clears throat> um, with that fish not making it, uh, I hope that it's a little bit better response, I guess you should say, from the, the areas of the biologist response time. And um, for the most part, I'm not complaining at all, man. I, you know, I think everybody did the best they could with what they had at that point. But I'm, I'm here to learn too, and I'm hoping that I can learn better ways to, uh, to build a, if I get that phone call of the next potential state record, or Mark gets that phone call, we want to be able to explain to that person the process and try to help that better them to try to keep that fish alive. We hadn't uh, said a whole lot. I told y'all when y'all came down, you know, what me and Mark had planned on doing with the, uh, the earnings. Back, thinking back, $10,000 is a lot of money. A lot of money for anybody. Uh, I could really use that money in other areas of my life, but uh, I'm not a man about uh, material things either. And I talked to Mark. We decided to donate that money to our fire department for a rescue boat for our county and our citizens. And uh, that, uh, that's the decision we made um, the day we spoke with y'all at the scales. During that incident, we had limited resources to work with. Uh, we didn't have a rescue boat for the county, which caused a delay in response time with several agencies and a conservation officer having to come from two counties over um, which it potentially almost cost me and um, everybody else you know our lives in that water that day this is this is crazy this is crazy. I gotta look, y'all. We gotta get off. But I just want y'all to know we went live. <laughs> this, this is the craziest. <laughs> this fish is over a hundred pounds right now. Over a hundred pounds, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>